hello all. I would like to start by thanking Peter Giuliano for the invitation to be a speaker at the first virtual RICO symposium. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and I'm very excited about it. Today I'm going to talk to you about the specialty coffee home experience. When one thinks of specialty coffee consumption, one of the first symbolic images that comes to mind is a milk-based beverage with a nice latte art on top. It represents coziness, it represents relaxing time with friends in our favorite coffee shop. But this way of thinking of specialty coffee has a romantic bias to it. In reality, coffee consumption, including specialty coffee, is much more, is better represented by takeaway or on-the-go symbols. Despite this low movement has found its way to coffee through specialty coffee shops, many people still don't have the time to enjoy a cup of coffee in a quiet corner in a coffee shop. Coffee consumption is still in the realm of fast consumption as part of a fast-paced lifestyle. The stimulant effect of caffeine is still a major motivator for coffee consumption. Caffeine makes people more focused and more productive. Contrary to fast consumption, which is already a strong segment, slow coffee consumption is still under construction. Uh, the specialty coffee industry has wholeheartedly embraced the slow coffee movement. Several specialty coffee shops around the world have made impossible anything outside the slow consumption philosophy. In the slide, we can see pictures of one of my favorite coffee shops in the world, and I'm lucky enough it's in Brazil. The ambience, we can see that the ambience communicates slowness, relaxing time. However, we as specialty coffee community we still need to expand the slow consumption segment. Until now, the specialty coffee shop has been the main location, the main context of consumption of specialty coffee. At least in Brazil, I'm going to present some data here. Uh, data show that the drinking habit of specialty coffee heavy consumers, daily consumers, is hugely tied to the coffee shop. So in the plot, we can see that out of 879 consumers in Sao Paulo, 69% drink their daily coffee, specialty coffee, in the coffee shop, exclusively in the coffee shop, whereas 3% drink their daily cup of specialty coffee at home, and 28% drink daily specialty coffee at the shop and at home. If we have a look, weekly consumption, not daily consumption now, of specialty coffee at home for these 69%, we can see that 60% of them consume specialty coffee at home four to six times a week, whereas 84% consume specialty coffee at home one to three times a week only. So, we can see that the specialty coffee consumption is hugely tied to the coffee shop. As I said, this data is from Brazil, but I'm sure it's representative of other countries as well. Um, it's good that the product specialty coffee is related to the coffee shop in the consumer's mind and behavior but it's not so good that it is so strongly tied that the consum 
that the consumption as a drinking experience can lose its meaning outside the shop. At the moment, the coffee shops cannot offer the drinking experience the consumer is used to. Even so, the consumer wants to get their daily cup of specialty coffee. Um, since the coffee shops can still provide the coffee beans, the consumption is shifting, is being shifted um, from shop to home. It's interesting that I can see a new door opening for the specialty coffee industry. The home experience as a slow consumption experience can be widened and strengthened. At the moment, consumers can make the time to have a cup of specialty coffee at their favorite spot at home, and the industry should make the most of it. This study on olfactory awareness is very relevant in this context. One positive aspect of slow home consumption is that it is highly engaging. The consumers may take a moment to appreciate the coffee, to pay attention to it, without too many external distractors. The specialty coffee as a complex beverage deserves more attention during consumption in order to be discovered as a complex beverage. Attention is central to olfactory awareness. This study I'm showing shows that when subjects were instructed to pay attention to the olfactory stimulus, in this case, it was a jasmine odor delivered to them, the odor was perceived as more intense and the piriform cortex, which is the primary olfactory cortex, had a stronger activation as well. This compared to when the subject were not instructed to pay attention to the jasmine smell. In addition to the role of um, attentional aspects in the drinking experience of a complex beverage, coffee shops and roasteries can deliver more than just coffee beans to the consumer. The straightforward, basic home consumption can be lifted up. Simple ideas can enhance the home drinking experience and add value to the product. For instance, with the coffee, it would be nice to get a card, a nice card, with a description of some few aroma and flavor notes. Um, this more general notes such as floral or berry can drive the consumer's attention to the stimulus to the coffee and can enhance perception as we have seen in this study with the jasmine smell. Uh, this one I'm showing is a very nice card and this roastery also um, has very nice uh, labeling for the packaging. It's from Morgan coffee roasters in Sweden. Nice packaging like this fabric bag and a brewing guide also make the consumer feel cared for. This one I'm showing is from Coffee Mamea in Japan. And selling simple home brewing kits like this one I'm showing for cold brew is also an interesting idea. This one is for from Panther Coffee in the US. More interactive home brewing can also be offered via QR codes and YouTube videos. The packaging itself is a very important interface between the product and the consumer. Design elements of the label can communicate the sensory profile of the coffee inside. And for instance, I'm going to show a few studies that have been done with packaging. This first study shows that the position of the logo in the package can affect expectations towards the coffee 
the perceived strength of the coffee and also purchase intent. They show that the logo at the bottom compared to the logo at the top or no logo at all increased the ratings, raised the ratings for perceived strength of the coffee and also received higher ratings for purchase intent. The second study that was, and this one was conducted by our research group, showed that the shape of the typeface on the label also impact taste expectation, taste perception, and purchase intent. This one showed that related to the coffee that was served, um, the more angular typeface compared to a rounder typeface, the coffee associated to the package with the angular typeface received um, higher ratings of expected acidity, perceived acidity, and also had higher purchase intent. This study here, uh, cross-model congruency between color and geometric shapes printed on the label affected liking and purchase intent of the same coffee served to consumers. Cross-model studies have shown that pink and round shapes have been associated to sweetness, whereas green angular shapes have been matched to acidity. In this study, um, our group um, ha has shown that when labels with cross-model congruency between color and shape, were presented to consumers, that is, when labels that were pink and round or green and angular, the coffee was liked more and the purchase intent was higher when compared to incongruent labels. So the labels that had a acidic color with a sweet shape or vice versa. In addition to labels, they are cups, so the more keen consumers can also be encouraged to try the same coffee from different cups in order to become aware that like wine, the vessel, the drinking vessel, can impact aroma and flavor perception in specialty coffee. Uh, these three studies were conducted by our research group and showed that the shape of the cup, the color of the cup, and the texture, rough or smooth texture of the cup, can affect sensory perception and also hedonic judgments in specialty coffee by consumers and also coffee experts. Another nice idea is to make use of music. Several studies have shown that music has a huge influence on both sensory perception and hedonic evaluation of drinks and food. Different playlists can be paired to different coffee profiles. Is the coffee vibrant and upbeat? Is the coffee deep and low? So, some songs can be paired up here. In sum, it is important to reviewing, to expand the concept of coffee drinking experience for the consumer. I brought this um, art installation from the 90s entitled Coffee Seeks Its Own Level that shows that none of the drinkers that are around the table can raise their cup before the others without the remaining cups overflowing. We can see this art installation as a metaphor for the challenges the coffee industry is facing at the, mo at the moment. Um, in the installation, drinking coffee is no longer something trivial and automatic but needs awareness and concatenation of the tasters, the drinkers.
like the drinkers in the image, the industry needs to shift from a known automatic modus operandi to new ways of marketing the product, or better saying, the drinking experience. After the current crisis ends, the consumers will be back to the coffee shops. We know that. But in addition to this already consolidated consumption segment, that is the slow consumption at the coffee shop, at the context of coffee shop, the industry must retain the new consumption habit, which is the slow consumption at home, the home experience. Thank you all for attending the talk and thank you for my collaborators as well. Thank you.